Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Gillette Stadium. This is Nick Face and Rob McCarthy. We are here for the Division 1A Super Bowl, where the Reading Rockets will be taking on King Philip. Very exciting contest going on here tonight. Right now, we have King Philip, who's going to be running the ball right there, and brought down by a host of tacklers from the Rockets. Loss of yards on that play, Rob. I believe, Nick, that was number 54 for the Rockets. Yep, that's Fisher, number 54, Fisher for the Rockets. Nick, is there anything specific you're looking into for tonight's game well, regarding? Well, I do want to say that Reading uh, comes into this contest eight and three throughout their season. Uh, King Phillip has been perfect. They have been undefeated and representing the state of Massachusetts for the Division 1A portion uh, very highly. Right. Very highly regarded uh, school and group. Not going anywhere this time once again. Another great stop by the running defense. And this will bring up a third down now. From our vantage point here, on the right side, if you look at the Reading bench, the right side of where uh, the crowd is, that's the Reading portion. That's correct. I do right. have to tell you, King Phillip completely wipes out the Reading section. Absolutely. They have brought everybody here, and there's a reason for that. They're pretty close by. This, this King Phillip represents basically the Rentham area. That's correct. So, there's a big third down play. They're gonna air it out. Little bump right there in the backfield. Gonna be no flag on the play. It's gonna be incomplete, intended for number 25 from King Phillip. Number 25 would be Shane Fromer. This will bring up a fourth down. Great start for the Reading defense. That was a great series by the Reading defense. It's three and out and um, Hopefully that keeps up for the rest of the game. Yep, the ball right now is on the 36 yard line in case some of our folks at home are wondering. It's gonna be a kick that may actually be out of bounds. We'll see where it goes. Whistle on the field. Looks like it's gonna be spotted at the 39 yard line. That's where the Rockets offense will be coming out first and 10. A year ago at this point, Redding was just coming off a crushing defeat against Neshoba here at Gillette. This is like redemption for them. It really is because I mean they get back on this big stage and uh, they really want to show what they have to offer. This is another field. chance. Reading exactly. has been victorious in 2010 so right. far here at Gillette Stadium. Right. Uh, we were able to broadcast that game. 2012 was also victorious at Bentley University where the game was. Reading will be lining up. We've got Bradley in the backfield for the Rockets. DiLoretto with the handoff. Actually fakes it. He's gonna actually keep it for himself. And he'll go out of bounds. Looks at about the 40 yard line. Didn't see any receivers, so he decided to go with it. Yeah, you could see from where the play call was designed right there. Bradley was in the back and he was moving around quite a bit. Right. They were trying to play some mind games a little bit with King Phillip it looked like right there. Gets a two yard pickup for Di Loretto, which will bring up a second and eight. Again, folks, this is the RCTV Sports coverage of the Reading Rockets versus King Phillip Division 1A Super Bowl. Nick Face in the house. And we also brought Rob McCarthy along too. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out, Nick. You're welcome. It's been, I have to tell you, you know, as much as I like to pull your leg sometimes, it's been a really fun season, I must say. It really has. I mean, this, this running team has really showed what they have to offer, and uh, they, um, they've got a lot to really bring up on the field. A great core group of seniors this year on the team. They do. Um, and a good, good underclassmen group as well. So well, what I like a lot about it is this senior group and leadership that's here for the Rockets is yes. they set a great example. Exactly. They have really good role models and guys that follow the whole mold of play, being a good sport. There's a lot of younger kids that, in this town of, of Reading, of course, that look up to these guys. And well, John Fiore and Dave Blanchard have really kind of Not sort kind of, of, have. Have. Yes. Sort of that whole type of culture of leadership and sportsmanship as a key contributor here on the field for the Reading Rockets and throughout their whole time here as, as coaches. So um, that would be a punt 
right there. Looks like it's going to be fielded by number 25. Once again, we've been seeing a lot of action from him so far. Fromer, that's where King Phillip will come out at the 20 yard line now for their second chance on offense. So running, we saw them on their first series, really wasn't able to do much there. De Loretto had uh, a couple yards on his run right there at the beginning, but this is the second chance for King Phillip to come out. I do want to say though, with King Phillip, they are 11-0 so far in their 2016 season, and they hold the advantage, I'd have to say. The I underdog think both, is Redding. I think, Redding is yeah, the underdog. I think both teams right now are really trying to sort of feel each other out, and because it's only the first quarter, I mean, we have 6.58 to go here in the first quarter, but um, I think both teams are still feeling each other out, seeing what types of play calls they're, they're doing, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll take it from there. So that was a two-yard gain right there. Uh, quarterback Leiden for King Phillip was able to hand it off to one of his running backs right there. Two-yard gain, which will bring up a second and eight. 6.35 to go here in the first quarter. The ball is on the 23-yard line. Let's see what the running defense has to offer again here against the King Phillip. Well, so far they've held there. They've held them. They have. And this has been very good. And size doesn't look like it's much of a, a no. pack there. Leiden with the pass. It looks like they're even it's with. It's a completion. Uh, That's over to, hold on one sec, Rod. Looks like the number 46. The number 48, it's going to be uh, Giovanni Fernandez, number 48. So that right there is the first completion of the day for both sides right there. Like so I was both. like I was Only just, a two-yard gain. Like I was saying, Nick, it looks like the matchup in size for both King Phillip and Renning is, is pretty much even. Just from looking here in the booth, um, I wouldn't really taste. It looks more like it's going to be a skill style. Yeah. That size does not matter here. Leiden with the pass. It'll be complete once again. This time the completion is to number six from King Phillip. That's DeLuca the third. I'm going to make sure we get that right. DeLuca the third. John DeLuca. And it's going to be short of that first down again, Rob. And this will now bring up... Uh, another chance for King Phillip to punt. Back for the Rockets. As soon as we get their numbers, we will let you know. The Reading defense has really been uh, strong so far. Hopefully it keeps yep. up. It's going to be fielded by number eight. Number eight for the Rockets is D'Agostino. Eric D'Agostino fields it at the 40. He's going to be brought down by a host of tacklers, including number 27 from King Phillip. That's Gelsomani. Uh, Gelsomini. And this will bring up a first and 10 for the Rockets. So a very good return right there. Nice little Dagostino return, D'Agostino was run. able to get the ball to about the 45-yard line. De Loretto and the offense coming back out. I could get very used to this, Rob, being here at Gillette. This is quite a thrill for all of these players to get a chance to be out here playing Players and coaching You're staff. You're on the field yeah. of the New England Patriots. Exactly. Hand off to DiNapoli right there. And DiNapoli's had a very, very good season. So DiNapoli is able to get, looks like he gets about four yards there on the play. This will be second and six coming up. Like I was saying on the drive-in tonight, Nick, this is the cathedral. You come driving down Route 1 and you see the lights. It's the house that Brady built in Belichick. Exa exa <laughs> it really is. It's uh, It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Yeah. It is an honor and a yeah. privilege. De Loretta with the pass. It's complete, and it will be a first down and more. That was a great pass by, by De Loretta. What a great pass right there over to number 21 from the Rockets. That's Jack Geiger, who's also had a fantastic season for the Rockets. Remember, Geiger just a junior as well. We'll be back for next season. So big play for the Rockets. Ball is at the 39, 39 yard line. It is a little brisk, to brisk tonight, Rob. Yeah, there is a little you bit of a- You can feel winters here. A bite in the air, yeah. Now the handoff to DiNapoli. I liked how Bradley was in the back and he was trying to Get a good block so DiNapoli could find some, right. good, some good yards right there. Looks like he's going to pick up about a yard. We'll confirm that in just a second. Yeah, he'll pick up a yard. 
3.36 and counting here to go in the first quarter. We want to thank our fantastic crew. We have a great crew here tonight from RCTV Studios. This is a thrill. We have guys down in the field covering it from different angles. We have some guys up here in the stands covering it. Uh, what a great job. I mean, really what a great job the yeah. entire production team did this, this fall. Uh, I'm blown away with how everybody has just really contributed to make this great. DiLoretto was able to be uh, the ball carrier in that play. Keeps it. And this will bring up a third down, just waiting on the placement. Yeah, but like you were saying, Nick, the really the, the crew that we have here tonight for the game and, and all season long has been fantastic. Third and five coming up. Big third and five for the Rockets. What would you do on this play, Rob? Is it a pass play? Is it a run play? What do you think they should do here? It's kind of a difficult decision here early on in the game. I would go with a pass play, but, um, yep, he's rolling out to the right. Going to go with the pass. Oh, a little dump pass. It's going to be incomplete. That was intended to number 23 from the Rockets, Anthony Diavolio. Short little dump pass out to the right, but that was unsuccessful. Now it's a fourth and five. With the ball being at the 34, I, I would think that the Rockets would, would be going for it. Doesn't make any sense to punt right here. DiLoretto has the play call. Uh, entering for the Rockets would be number 27, Pat Conroy. Exiting number 45, number 45 for the Rockets. Got to flip my sheet to see who number 45 is. That's John uh, Eldridge. So a couple adjustments right there. DiLoretto, plenty of time for the pass and gets it for a first down. Calm, cool, drop back, found D'Agostino, who already had a great return gets the first down. Move the chains. That was actually a nice play call. Saw him wide open in the middle. Sure, a little dump pass again. Move the chains. A snap and an adjustment made again for the Rockets. We're seeing this a lot. They're lining up in different formations. Sets and formations. Yeah. That's the word. And DiNapoli has a great first run on that first down. We'll see what the uh, official spots it. Looks like he's going to get about five. Could be four. Or it could only be seven. <laughs> it could only be three. They put it at the stadium clock here as a second down and seven to go. Yeah, we'll see how they. I wasn't too keen on that placement of where the official put it. Another adjustment. And this is throwing King Phillip off a lot here. DiNapoli goes right up the middle. Looks like a first down to me. What do you think, Rob? That I believe is a first down. Another great run. Is it? No, it's third and one. Third and one. Again, this placement. It could be from our view. I mean, we're at the 50-yard line. Yeah. It's all right. Third and one. This looks like a great chance for Redding to again run the ball, get it, it towards, is. get it right down towards the end zone. Another adjustment. Redding with the. I'm, like, I'm liking what I see with the formation, different formation set. There you go, get that. You give it to DiNapoli, he gets it up. Did he get the first? Should be down. enough for the first down. No, I believe they're calling f fourth and one. Fourth and inches coming up. Wow. Fourth and inches. What do you do on this play? I think they might be, as they like to call it, ground and pound. Quarterback sneak I'm going for. Quarterback sneak. Corey, what I like is DiLoretto is, is big and tall. He's strong enough where he can keep that ball and dive straight ahead to get that inch, basically, he needs. That, he means, needs an inch. that means the line is timeout. I'm going to call a timeout, and I like the timeout that's there that's given for by, by the Rockets. It gives them a chance to uh, adjust and get themselves set. Actually, as a matter of fact, it looks like the clock, we have it at 10. So it looks like it could be the start of the – it is. It's the second quarter. We get 10 minutes here for quarters, so that's why. So they'll readjust, and the ball will be at, I think, the 19. 
Why don't we have a, a moment here? We just want to make sure that we uh, send out this uh, special message for our broadcast. The rights fee to this cable cast has been waived by the MIAA on behalf of the students of Reading Memorial High School. The MIAA represents nearly 400 senior high schools across the Commonwealth and more than 2,000 uh, 2, young men and women who participate annually in MIAA govern athletic competition. Any rebroadcast or republication of this program without the consent written by the MIAA is prohibited. We have to make sure we cover all of our grounds. We want to do that. We must do that. It's not about have, it's a must. <laughs> well, I do know what's another, what another must is, is Reading must get this fourth in inches, which is coming up right now. We're in the start of the second quarter now. Ground and pound. Yep. Fourth and one, they say. It's really fourth and inches. If you want to be precise, it's five inches. Should be interesting to see what the play call is. I, I would again say the ball should be going to De Loretto. He's been out here before. He's the, one of the senior captains. Well, he's got Give two, that boy the ball. He's got two deep backs, so I don't know if he, that's just uh, how the setup is, and he's just going to go right for the, the line. Well, we've seen, I think we're just waiting on the commercial breaks here. Is that? Yeah, we're uh, waiting for the TV to get back. <laughs> Not on our end, on, on NECN's end. Yes, this game is broadcast on New England Cable Network. Uh, you got a timeout. The first time this game will be aired will right. be um, the week after this is done. Um, we have another timeout that's given here. Oh, we have a timeout. Rob, anything that you've noticed so far in the game? Uh, like I said before, I think it was the Reading defense has been looking great so far, mm -hmm. um, as well as, as the offense. They've caught a couple of bad breaks, but um, nothing really um, – Nothing's really concerning me so far in, with um, the play. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with how Reading has come out. They've I been am, poised. Uh, yes. They've been ready. Yes. They've been making the adjustments that's necessary. Right. King Phillip, just from our, our our viewpoint from over here, they're yellow and they're green. Okay, I understand yes. that. But they look like they're little tiny bees that yes. just aren't buzzing right, right. now. That's right. Like Reading I looks bigger, stronger, more prepared. And this is no knock on King Philip because they've had a very great season as well. Like I said before, both lines look like they are sort of even with with height wise. But I do think that Reading's had a tougher schedule. I mean, they've been they yes. played Acton Boxborough, some other teams that are here. Handoff. And then we get the handoff. The Avolio gets it. Number uh, actually, excuse me, that's Geiger number twenty one. Geiger gets it. That'll be plenty enough for the first down. Great play call. Ground and pound. They 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 had fourth and in, in one, and they had to get that. Uh, Move the chains. Reading is, Rob, coming off of a loss against Stoneham. And I have a little proposition here for you. Okay. Thought about it a lot. Did that loss against Stoneham make Reading more prepared for this opportunity here at Gillette? What do you think? I think they might have been part of it just because they went into Thanksgiving um, and not getting that win against their rival, Stoneham. But... Um, I think running all week has been mentally preparing and preparing on the field as well for, for this contest. Sometimes a loss yes. gets you more prepared yes, for the they big do. opportunity. Right. Exactly. As and crazy as that sounds, I just think that it did. I'm I think sure I, all these players were pretty upset that they did lose. I would imagine. And it was the first loss since Stoneham on Thanksgiving since 2006. Yeah, so I think they might have sort of said, wow, we have to, we have to wake up. That was a good wake-up call. DiNapoli was the ball carrier in that first down, and he picked up uh, five yards on the play right there. DiNapoli also gets the ball. Not going anywhere on that play. This will bring up a third down, and it's actually going to be a loss of yards on the play. It's going to be a loss of one. Third and six coming up. 8.38 and counting to go in this second quarter. This is Nick Face and... Rob McCarthy. We are here from Gillette Stadium. As Rob said, the cathedral for the New England Patriots. Yeah, I don't, the King Philip crowd, uh, fans are really pumped up and ready to go. I can't believe how big their fan uh, section is. They don't really fan have any, is. any room over there in their section. DiLoretto gonna go for the pass. Looking for Geiger, any flag? No flag. 
I want to give credit to number 11 from King Philip. That's Rob Powers. Great coverage on Geiger. No flag, no anything there. Very clean play. If you watch from the replay here at Gillette Stadium, it just shows that he got his hand right in the zone where Geiger was trying to catch that ball. And now it brings up a very crucial for the Rockets, fourth and six. I think DiLoretto is going to look to pass this ball. So I like the chance for uh, Eric D'Agostino on the right side. We'll see if what he's going to do. Pass. pass. Touchdown. Is, no, oh. it's incomplete. In and out of the hands. Intended for number 21, Geiger. And King Phillip will be taking over on downs. Ball will be on the 14. Well, I mean, that was a great play right there. Di Loretto threw a great ball. And I think just from looking from the replay, it just went in and out of the hands of Geiger. He had it. I think his, he, he took his eyes off the ball a little bit. That, that, that can be, that can happen. He was getting away from the defender. And as soon as he was turning around, the ball was coming out. And I don't think he was able to get his hands up in enough time. Mm -hmm. What can you do? So the defense for the Rockets has been perfect so far. Oh, no. And he just broke away there. And that's number 48 at the 50 and finally brought down. Looks like right outside of the 40-yard line. That was number 48. We've mentioned his name before from King Phillip. Number 48 is Giovanni Fernandez. That's number 48, correct, Rob? Yep, number 48. That is number 48. Yep, he's a big guy, big guy. So big first down play for King Phillip. Ball will be placed at the 39 yard line. That was a blown coverage, I believe, there from Redding. They need to make that adjustment a little bit better. Another handoff. This will be to number 25 this time. Number 25 from King Phillip. That's uh, Fromer. We've seen him from before. He's, he's been getting a lot of action. Yep, so Fromer has been getting a lot of action. He's been very busy so far this game. So this will bring up a second and seven coming up. Big second and seven. We are scoreless, Rob. Surprised at that? I think that the... Uh... This time another, ha another handoff. This one's going to number six from King Philip. Number six. I've said his name before as well. We're doing a lot of repeating here. We apologize for that, but a lot of their players have been uh, very busy for King Philip. This is John DeLuca III. Didn't get the first down. He's very close to it. Third and one. Ball is at the 32-yard line. Another handoff. Ball is loose. Let's see what we have here. No, it's not loose. Uh, they got the first down. That was a handoff, looks like the number 44 this time from King Phillip. Number 44 is Alex Olson. So Olson able to get the first down for King Phillip. The ball is now placed at the 29 yard line. 6-12 to go in this first half. We are scoreless still. We want to thank the crew for everybody here at RCTV. It's been a great season this fall with covering sports. And this is kind of like the special ceremony, being able to be here at Gillette Stadium. This is off to number 25 again, Fromer. Like you were saying before, it's very special for all of these players that being able to participate in this type of game sure on this is. type of stage here at Gillette Stadium. And... It just, it's really icing on the cake for these kids. Certainly is. Some of these guys, from, uh, a lot of them were here from last year. So they have the experience being here at Gillette. It, there's no nerves, really. You've been here before. This is more of making sure that you are prepared, ready to execute. The more prepared team will definitely be victorious, most nine times out of 10. Well, it's all about the culture and, and, and making sure these these kids are prepared from the coaching staff. 
I can tell you right now, the Reading coaching staff has been pretty amped up and wanting to get back to this chance once again this season. That's right. So carrying it over to your players is pretty simple if you can get the message out correctly. Trying to buy get, into the system. As right, exactly. Leading a, leading a culture of, of just of sportsmanship, leadership, and being prepared all season long to get back to this type of stage is needed. Uh, just coming in for the Rockets was number nine, uh, Papalardo. Exiting was uh, number 77, Murphy. Cole Murphy, one of the captains. King Phillip calls the timeout. Uh, Rob, while we have a timeout, I just want to have a special shout out here to the uh, Reading High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Just had our big uh, committee vote okay. where we were able to announce the 2017 class yeah. to the Hall of Fame. I don't like to single certain people out. However, we do need to do that for one particular player right. who represents these Reading Rockets every single time they take the field. And that was number 12. Michael Boyd. Yes. Michael Boyd is now a 2007 inductee into the RMHS Hall of Fame. That ceremony will be November 18th, 2017. Uh, that's uh, going to be an Andover at the traditional hotel that we've always had at the Wyndham Hotel. Yep. I guess they call it the Hilton Hotel, the ownership change. But this is somebody that all of these players in the locker room, they have a, there's a plaque there that has Mike Boyd's name, yep. his message, his story, a little quote about him about not quitting. All these guys look at this before they go to a practice game, and that's something that is very, very special that they can have. Airing it out right there is Leiden, and that'll be incomplete. So I just want to say a special congratulations to the Boyd family. I know that there's many of you that, and many fans, many friends, all of them, that have been really hoping for this day to come true, and I'd like to let our audience at home know that it has come true. So we're looking right. forward to that as a committee and as a town and organization and all. Um, and as a high school. As a high school, uh, Michael Boyd will be in the class of 2017. So congratulations there. I know uh, he's very missed. Yes. Very, very missed. In case some people don't know about the um, story of Michael Boyd, great opportunity to come to the Hall of Fame event, which will be next November, uh, to hear a little bit about the message that he was able to give to all of these guys that were here. When he passed away, he was actually coaching. Uh, That's right. Before, so it, it's important to have that a good message there. So I do remember the 2000 team, 2010 team yep. really sort of dedicated that whole year to Mike Boyd. They did. Um, Rob, we had missed this play from before. That was a big fourth, and uh, it was 21. There was a penalty on that play. So we just wanted to make sure our fans knew at home that that was a penalty. That was a big fourth and 21. Uh, fourth and 11 now coming up. Excuse me. It was a third and 21 from before. Fourth and 11 coming up. Um, it will look like King Phillip will again look to go. It doesn't make any sense to punt. So this will be a big stop here for the defense if they prevent King Phillip from getting a first down and scoring. Leiden with the handoff. No, he's going to pass. Passing it over to number 48. Number 48 for King Phillip. Again, is Fernandez. And he will be short of the first down. He will be short. Where the ref has placed it, he will be short. Redding will be taking over on downs at looks like about the 21-yard line. Defense again doing their job. The running defense has really been um, has been looking good. Solid. So, so far. Solid, flawless. Drawing penalties, that's what you want to do for the other side. Now the running offense, they got to go 79 yards to get down to get the touchdown. They need that. Again, another shift here. Geiger is um, on our left. DiNapoli is going to be the ball carrier. Finds a hole. Get going. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. He's at the 40 now, the 30. He's still inbounds. What a great block by Jack Geiger. Outstanding, still on his feet. Touchdown. Touchdown. Nice play. Jack, what a run. Jack Geiger, you must give credit to. Huge block right there. And DiNapoli goes 79 yards and gets that touchdown. That is one heck of a run. Nice block. 
apologize for the shouting. We're a little excited. <laughs> I know, we just got a We're little... not biased at all, trust me. <laughs> what a heck of a job right there. That is, that what, that's what signifies a team. Geiger's play right there was so crucial to DiNapoli finding that end zone. Crucial. And now Renning will look like they'll sit, line up and go for two. Outstanding play. Oh, that is outstanding. It couldn't have happened for a better kid right there for Nick DiNapoli. Outstanding job. Number five there, Nick DiNapoli. What a pretty play. Do you agree with going for two, or do you go for the kick? What do you think? Um, we'll see after this play. Seeing this a lot. They line up at one spot and then they we have. adjust. DiLoretto flicks it back off yeah. to DiNapoli. Not going to go anywhere on that. He'll be down at the 10. However, we'll, we'll be professional now. That may be a little bit <laughs> unprofessional with how much we screamed on that touchdown. We don't want to become too too much. We don't want to become Homer Simpson, basically. Um, so that was um, uh, the two-point conversion was, was no good. No good. That's correct. And this will uh, be now a chance here for Reading. Reading will be kicking off, where King Philip will be coming out with their offense once again. I don't think I would have changed the play right there. I don't think I would have. I would have kept the play with going for two. Reading has done this all season long. Their kicking game, they, it's just not a part yeah, of Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Just to, it's not a part of the Rockets. They're, they are just, all about yeah. going for two. Right. We, well, this season we just we, don't want to have to chase points later on in this game. Well, I'm just saying that this past year we've seen them going for the kicks, and they've been unsuccessful, so they've been going towards the two-point conversions. Yep. Yeah, and down number 81 for the Rockets. A little swift kick right there. Fielded, a little bobble. Fielded at the 30. Now at the 35. Now at the 50. Will Hill go out of bounds? Looks at it about the 45 yard line. Coverage there was a little shaky, but being at the 45 is okay. The defense again coming back out for the Rockets. Leiden and crew for King Phillip will be coming back out. They officially put the ball at the 45-yard line. This will bring up a first and 10 for them. Oh, we have a break in action, too. Just want to let our folks at home, you can follow along on the Reading Post. Reading Post is an online newspaper that gives the town of Reading some great feature stories, news, sports entertainment, all that jazz. So you can follow the Reading Post from Facebook and you can also follow them on Twitter as well. Stay connected, stay with the post. How do you like that? Stay connected, stay with the post. That's actually a great slogan. You like that? That was neat. Thanks. I'm, I, mean, I guess I am creative. I'm still totally blown away by that. 79 uh, yards, Rob. we got to make sure we write that down. Because we, we are covering the post-game interview for this afterwards, and I want my hands on DiNapoli. Yeah. DiNapoli had just, that was outstanding. I'm still trying I to hear I want to hear from him on what it was like to have your team being able to have some great blocks there for you to get down the field and just get into the end zone. I'm trying to figure out exactly where. Actually, I'm going to leave that for later. We'll leave it for later. We can't jump. We can't. I be. will leave that. No, no, don't even mention it. We, I'm we leaving can't it. Mention it. I'm leaving it for later. So on this um, timeout that's going on right here, we have 221. Excuse me. We have yeah 221 to go here in this first half. Rob, what stands out to you the most here in the half? Well. Obviously, the 79-yard uh, touchdown by Nick DiNapoli, as well as the uh, the solid, solid play of the running defense, has been great so far. Second and eight. Leiden in trouble. 
Going to be brought nice down play. by the Rockets. How about that play right there? That's brought down by Damari, number one, and number 23, Anthony DiVolio. Big sack right there. That brings up, uh, brings the ball at the 45 now. In King Philip territory, as a matter of fact. They're going backwards. Third and 18 coming up. Boy, is Redding prepared tonight, Rob. They are so prepared. They were ready for this game. They were ready. I, like I said before, Nick, I think the coaching staff all week has been sort of grinding in their minds. You have to be prepared for this stage. You, you, ha you have to be. Third and 20. Leiden's going to look to pass. Got a big play right there. You have to give credit. That's number 17 from King Phillip. Number 17, that's Tyler Janeski. Janeski gets the big play and picks up the first down. That right there is where definitely your secondary has to be on the same page. I think it was more of a surprise that that was a pass thrown right down the middle. That needs to be defended better. It has to be because, I mean, you're leaving an offensive player wide open in the middle. Right, and again, going for the pass. Oh. Almost picked off. Little bump right there from 81. 81 for King Phillip. That's Ethan Dunn. Good coverage from number, looks like number nine. That's Papalardo. So Cole Papalardo doing the nice job there on the defensive side of the ball. We have 109 to go in this first half. Reading Rockets six, King Phillip zero. Ball is at the 31 yard line. Leiden again drops back, looking for the pass. He's got it, complete. Looks like to number 86 this time. Yep, number 86, that's Morganelli, David Morganelli. So he picks up the first down. Clock is still running at 58 seconds. So they're making Redding have to work here a little bit on the defense. It's almost like they're in a hurry up because the clock, they know it's going to expire. It's 45 seconds and counting. Leiden with a short pass over to number 17. 17 for King Philip. That would be Janeski, who had the big conversion on that big fourth down play. Actually, that was a third and 20, excuse me. Janeski was able to come up with a big reception there. So he gets a three yard pickup, second and seven coming up for King Philip. We do have a timeout on the play. They can get some, get some air. <laughs> 34 seconds to go. I must say, Nick, that Gillette Stadium is looking absolutely fantastic. I don't know if they've done any upgrades here to the stadium, but it, it looks amazing. Just looking around right now, I mean, we have up on the top portion with Plymouth Rock Insurance Group. It says introducing Reading High School, King Philip Regional High School. They're the Warriors. We have the MIAA. Welcome to the 2016 MIAA Football State Championship. All kinds of great things to just look at. And one thing that we are looking at right now is the ball at the 14-yard line for King Philip. King Philip threatening to score. The pass. Looking Leiden. Leiden in the end zone and gets a touchdown. Number 81 for King Phillip. Number 81 is Ethan Dunn. He had used Ethan Dunn on that series right there before. This ties the contest up. 6-6 six, six now, 6-6. Six, six. Now we'll get a chance to see what King Phillip will go for. Will they go for two or will they go for the kick? It looks like I see the kicker looks like number 67 Rob can you confirm that no 37 37 number 37 number 37 would be Cole Baker the kick the snap and it is good so King Phillip gets the kick right there from Baker and that gives them a one point lead at 7-6 with 28 seconds to go so that wasn't such a great series on defense right there. Yeah, the secondary. They let up the big plays right there. Yeah, the, the big secondary plays. was really not 
in the correct position. It was a mismatch. So now for the Rockets, they will have DiNapoli, number five. He's on the right side. And number 21, Geiger. They're both at about the 10-yard line. Now coming out to about the 15 with a kick from Baker. Will be underway. So Baker makes it a one-point difference now it's seven six King Philip we have 28 seconds to go here in the half this is the last game tonight at Gillette Stadium this is the Reading Rockets taking on King Philip Regional High School they are the Warriors they are in yellow the Rockets are in their whites ball is at the 40 yard line Baker is ready on his right and left the kick is a little bit of a swiv kick right there Fielded by number, the ball is loose, and it is out, and King Phillip will take it. That was fumbled by number 52 from the Rockets. Number 52, uh, Connery. Ball came out at about the 35-yard line. The good news is that there is 19 seconds. If anything, Leiden and his group, it may not be enough time to go in. So. Definitely recovered by number 41. Number 41 from King Philip. Let's see, that's Max Armour. You gotta grip the ball. I, I didn't like the way he was holding on to that. I just didn't. Didn't have a good feeling there. So the ball is at the 32 yard line. Actually, Rob, I'm not sure why, but Redding does have the ball. Looked like he fumbled it. Did Redding recover it? They must have. Did not look like it to me. Isn't that bizarre? Well, that we're going into the into the half, so we can talk about it for. We for can a talk about minutes. that for a minute. Uh, what did you see on that? It uh, looked like number 41 from King Philip. That's Max Armour recovered the ball, but. We'll try and figure that out for we'll, you folks. We'll look back at the tape and see if we found something different. Um, on another note, Redding's going into the locker room now. Same with King Phillip to score. King Phillip seven, Redding Rockets six. Plenty of ball games still left. I want you all to make sure that you continue to enjoy this broadcast. If you just heard my voice crack, I'm gonna go take a nice drink of tea and I will be back with Rob, hopefully, if I can live, <laughs> in just a moment. So we will be back in about 15 minutes. Join us then. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Division 1A Super Bowl. This is Nick Face and... Rob McCarthy. We want to open up the broadcast with letting you know that in high school sports, you are not able to go to review. You are not able to challenge a play. So we thought from our vantage point that the Connery ball, which was out of his hands, should have been a fumble. We were correct on that. Right. However, you're not able to go to review in high school football, so he was marked as down. So that's why we saw Corey DiLoretto in the offense come back out about 20 seconds to go to close out that half. They just took a knee. It was good to verify that because yep. I don't know if many people were aware of that. It, looked, it was clear as day down our end, so we want to just let people know that we are not saying the wrong thing, right. that that was totally what right. we saw happen. Right. This will be Baker, number 37, getting set to kick off to start the second half. We are ready to go. It is caught by Geiger, number 21, still on his feet, strong on his feet. Gets down at about the 41-yard line. Will he'll go out of bounds on, so 41 yards at the 41-yard line. This will bring up a first and 10 for the Rockets. Rob, what needs to change? What needs to happen for the second half? Ray just needs to stay persistent on, in the offense. Um, Get back in the King Philip red zone and, and get another touchdown. See how they do it. Again, the rocket shifting. The snap underway. Tried to go for the fake pass right there. DiLoretto did. Geiger was the ball carrier. 
He'll get about three yards on that play. This will bring up a second and seven. I do want to take a moment to just thank a lot of people that made this broadcast possible. The crew here at RCTV, we cannot do this without them. They do a great job. We all traveled down together, uh, made the journey 45, 50 minutes to get here from Reading. So we thank all of those people putting it together. We got to thank Tom Zaya, Director of Athletics of, at, at uh, Reading High School, and Principal Adam Barker for allowing us to be here. Yes, they have to sign off on the two of us being here. So that is, uh, it's very, we, we thank them. Another great run by Nick DiNapoli. Nick DiNapoli has been very strong. If he gets a good read on the ball and gets a good, some good, um, a good, uh, good yards on the play, he can run a long way. He was able to pick up a really nice hole with a route that he was running at. He just did a great job. We have the ball at the 45 yard line now. First and 10 again for the Rockets. This would be a big statement here for Redding if they're able to get in the end zone early here in this third quarter. They pass it back again to DiNapoli. DiNapoli trying to find some room on the outside. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Want to see what this will be? Did you see anything that looks fishy? Um, not sure. Let's see what what the what the penalty call is. Reading looks like they're moving back. It looks like it could be on the Rockets. Going to be a oh, hold on Reading. It's going to be a 10-yard penalty. Oh, and I believe it was number 67 for the Rockets. You said number 67? Nick Rizzo. Yep, Rizzo. So, so the ball will be at a, looks like at about the 45-yard line. So a 10-yard penalty right there. So first and 20 coming up for the Rockets. On a movement there, Conroy now lining up on the right side, number 27. DiLoretto drops back, trying to avoid the sack, the pass. He's just going to throw it out of bounds, incomplete. This will bring up a second and 20. I don't think DiLoretto liked what he saw from his unit there. He didn't have any availability. He was unavailable at this time. Please leave a message after the beep. He's supposed to beep. Beep. There you go. But he had no availability of, for receivers. No. So he just threw it away. No. Again, second and 20, 844. That is not the time. It's actually pretty late here tonight. It's past my bedtime. No, it's really not. The pass. De Loretto again in some trouble. Going to throw it out of bounds. And that was a risky pay, uh, pass right there because he almost picked off by number 21 from uh, King Phillip. Number 21 is Andrew Dittrich. Again, a third and 20 coming up. Redding's got to find, De Loretto's got to find one of his receivers open. That's what he has to do. It looks like, for the most part, the defense for King Phillip has pretty much rise to the occasion. They have done a very good job on the adjustment side, minus the DiNapoli uh, pretty much 80-yard run. DiNapoli is in the back. De Loretto. Again, more pressure. The line's going to make sure that they hold him better. Ugh. Looking for Geiger at about the 40. That'll be incomplete. This will now bring up a fourth and 20. That would have been a nice connection to Jack Geiger. Remember the ball was at the 45, and Redding will punt. We have Conroy back at the 30, where he will be punting. Off to number 21 in the backfield for King Phillip. Number 21, that's Dittrich. And the other is, looks like number 24. Number 24, who is Bender. That's a good punt right there from Conroy. Just shy of that 25-yard line. It's going to be spotted at the 26, where we'll see King Phillip come out first and 10 at the 26. Eight, 18 now to go here in this third quarter. 
This game is 7-6. King Phillip. Anything that you've noticed so far, Rob, to start this third quarter? Um, it seems like the King Phillip defense has been came out to play in the, here in the second half, mm -hmm. um, stopping the Reading offense, but we'll see what happens. I think we're seeing why this was the last game of the day. It's, That's another it's, great. It's a very, very, they're both matched up very well. They are. It doesn't seem like there's one advantage over another. It seems like they're very evenly matched. Um, but another great play by the Reading uh, defense, Redding defense right, there. right there. So this will bring up a second and 10. Ball is at the 26. We're in the third quarter. Again, this is Nick Face and Rob McCarthy for RCTV's production of RMHS Sports. For tonight, we're at Gillette Stadium for the MIAA Division 1A Super Bowl Championship. Leiden going for the pass. Wide open. Coverage was blown on that play. Number 34 right there. He's at the 10-yard line and finally brought down. Brought down by number 27, Conroy. Rob, what was his number again? Uh, that number 34, was correct? Number 34. That was uh, Masser. So Masser, number 34. Wide open down on the side. I don't know how they didn't have, some, someone, something didn't happen correctly there. I think they had double coverage on the other side of the field. That's why he came up nice and, and uh, nice and open. Yeah, he was very wide open, very wide. So the ball is at the 11-yard line. Leiden with a handoff. Bradley with a big stop right there. Not going anywhere on that play. This will bring up a second down, looks like at about 10. That was Olsen, number 44, on the carry. Gets one yard, they're gonna be generous. One yard on the play, so ball is now at the 10. Second and nine coming up. Again, they're gonna go, nope, they're gonna go for the pass. Leiden. Ball was tipped, and then it'll be incomplete. Third and nine. If there's any time right now for the defense to step up, now's the time. Now is the time. Damari, you gotta give credit for Damari. He was defending uh, number 34. Number 34 again is Mazur. And he was able to not allow him to get a catch on that play. So great job there. Uh, by Damari. Damari only a, a sophomore Rob, by the way, too. Got uh, triple receivers on the right side. Pass is complete, and he'll be down at the two. They will spot that ball at the two. So this will bring up fourth down and two yards to go. Now they're gonna actually give it fourth and one. Fourth and one. Most likely we'll see a run, we'll see. QB sneak. Is that a touchdown? Waiting for the official call. Touchdown. Touchdown for King Phillip. That makes the score now 13 to six, King Phillip. Will they go for two or will they kick? We'll see. Looks like they're gonna kick, Baker is back. Snap, the kick is up and the kick is good. So Baker with the kick gives King Phillip now a 14-6 lead. What did you think about that series for King Phillip? Uh, I think it was very, very, uh, it was good on their end because they, I like to keep using this word, persistent, and they were moving up the field in a timely fashion. Here's an interesting stat too for our, our home audience. King Phillip has been known to run the ball quite a bit this entire season. 
we're seeing a lot of a change here tonight. They are throwing the ball. Leiden is throwing the ball, finding his open receivers. And I think in a way that may be surprising the coaching staff from the Rockets, because I think they were prepared for the big run game. And we've seen a little bit of it, but Leiden has been very poised. He's connected, he's got the big plays. I mean, look at the play, third and 20, he was able to get. Bobbled by Geiger at the 25, brought down at about the 28. Will be a first, and oh, we have a, pen, a flag on the play. Let's see what this is. Did you see anything with the flag one strong? See anything? I did not. Maybe another holding, possibly. This is going to be a personal foul call on the Rockets. It is. Personal foul. You know, Coach Fiori's not too pleased with that. You can see him yeah. right there. He is he's, he's pretty fired up. He's not pleased with that with that with that with that uh, penalty there's call. The con there's the cam right there. Looks like right there from 52. Or it could have been Brad. It was Bradley stepping on one of the players. Late hit. It was on Bradley. I can see that. Can you see that too? Yeah, I can I saw see that why the that, officials called that. I saw that from that vantage point. And it was, uh, yep. was Claire's day. Going with the handoff to DiNapoli. Gets a couple on that play. We'll bring up a second and probably eight. I think he got about two yards on that play. No, they give him three. Second and seven. Six ten to go in this third quarter. King Phillip 14. Reading Rocket six. Reading trailing by eight. Coming up this fall, I mean this winter, excuse me, this is the close, closure basically of our the fall season here for sports at Reading High School. We'll have coverage of the boys and girls basketball team, the boys and girls hockey team. We'll have some track coverage. De Loretto brought down. Definitely for a loss of yards right there on that play. To bring up a third down. Um, I was just getting into what we'll be covering this winter. We'll have some coverage for the girls and boys basketball, hockey, track, swimming. Am I forgetting anybody? Some wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling will be a yeah. part. Um, any others, Rob? Um, no, I think hockey. Did you mention yes, hockey? Yes, I did mention hockey. Yep. I think you have it all covered. It should be a fun winter. We're looking forward to that. The uh, basketball is mainly Tuesday, Friday nights. Hockey is Wednesday and Saturday nights, or Saturdays. De Loretto just had to throw it away. He just he had no availability he, again. He had nobody, nobody open. So Redding's going to be forced to punt. We're seeing why King Philip is undefeated right now. They are a very smart football team. They are, they, they're fundamentally sound. You're seeing them, has it been a penalty on them all game, Rob? That's unheard of. Conroy, that's a short punt at the 45. It's loose. And it looks like it'll be down at the 48. Cole Pavolaro was all over him. Yes, he was. The defense, typically up front, has been spectacular for the Rockets. It's been, secondary has been shaky. A couple blown coverages there. And the offense has just really not done much of anything outside of DiNapoli with the big 80-yard touchdown run. Yeah. That's all we've seen so far. Redding needs a big stop here. They need an interception. They need to get a fumble recovery, something like that. The momentum is certainly on King Phillips' side. They go for the run there from number 48. That's Fernandez. Good start for King Phillip on this drive. They pick up two. They bring up a second and eight.
Anything specific you want to see during this? Um, I want to see a big stop. I want to see a fumble. I want to see an interception. Something where the momentum can see. shift into Redding's side. That's yeah, what I want to see. see. Leiden's going to look for another receiver to be open. And once again. Up, up the side again for, 40, for number 48 for King Phillip. Fernandez gets it again for the first down and more. I can see Geiger, 15, and, and Damari, one, looking back at each other saying, is that your guy? Who was that? Was that mine? Was that yours? The defense was looking at that fake handoff. And it blew the coverage up the right side again to number 48. They got, they got burnt big time on that. He was wide open yeah. once again. That's your opponent being a little bit more, having a little bit more speed. Yeah. And prepared right there. I wouldn't say prepared. I think just. Or, or prepared meaning executing, basically, is what I mean. Execution. Yeah. They're executing more. Again, Fernandez said his name a bunch tonight. Boy, is he big and strong. There's a couple replays right there with him. He is very difficult to bring down. You can see why King Phillip has been so strong up front. I mean, he, he is quite a football player. He's able to get through a couple of guys. They have double coverage on him. And hopefully they're, uh, hopefully the Redding can hold them off. Plenty enough for the first down. Move the chains again. I'm not sure what Redding's doing right now, Rob. I'm kind of confused on it a little bit. It looks like they're not knowing what to do. Side I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what. King Philip is going to throw at him. They're going to throw exactly. it, pass it. I don't think they know what's coming. I know. Yeah. Leiden. Oh, big hit right there. And they picked nice. it off. What did I say? They had to do that, and right there was crucial. Let's give credit to 23. That's Anthony Diavolio. Quarterback, there was no pressure on Leiden so far. That pressure that was just added there completely is a game changer. One heck of a play. So picked off there in the end zone, which means that the Rockets will take the ball over at the 20. One heck of a play by Anthony Diavolio. That there was one of the reasons why Leiden hasn't thrown the ball that much this season. Yes, he has thrown it, but not consistently, like Redding was allowing him to do. you got to get up front and get the pressure to him because exactly. then he'll throw it away, and it did exactly what, what you, I called for. I, I said that. I said Redding needs to get a big an play interception or a big play. Now DiLoretto's chance to have a big play. A little pressure. Found DiNapoli, and another nice block by Geiger. DiNapoli at the, looks like 48 yard line, where it now, Redding, little momentum changer here now, Rob. We're at the 48. We got first, a, we, another first down for the Rockets. The Redding offense has to keep rolling here after that huge play by Anthony DiVolio in the end zone. Yep. Just like you said. Rob De, Rob DeLoreau didn't see anything down downfield, so a nice little dump pass out to the left. And again, he was under pressure as well. He was. And he had to make up a decision and make his mind up on what he wanted to do. He found DiNapoli open. Why DiNapoli was that open, I just don't know. It was Geiger. Geiger this time breaking free on the right side and goes out. That's a great first run right there on that first down. I think he might only be a yard short. Let's see where the official spots it. Looks like he's going to spot at the 45. I would say it's about uh, about two yards, would you say? Two yards yeah. short. So an eight-yard gain right there from Geiger. Second and two coming up. 146 to go in this third quarter. This is Nick Face and Rob McCarthy. We're here for RCTV's coverage of RMHS Sports. We're at Gillette Stadium. As Rob has said it before in this broadcast, we're at the Cathedral of the New England Patriots. <laughs> DiNapoli gets the first down. What Redding needs to be careful here with is, yes, we have plenty of time, but remember, we only get 10 minute quarters. So it's 129 and counting. If they do get this touchdown, again, they're gonna have to make up, this, they're gonna have to go for two, they have to. So. They're going to have to decide 
how they're going to game plan this. What is the best way of going about this business? You can see DiLoretto uh, going to the side. Well, they have third and one right now. Went to the side now, he's. Here's the, here's the switch up on the offense. Handoff. Got the handoff, looks like to DiNapoli. He got it. Did I say that was a first down? I apologize for that. That was they a third the down. Third play. and one. Now it's a first down, sorry. With that run up the middle, they, they got that. Jumping the gun a little bit. 52 seconds on the clock, 50. So a new set of downs, first and 10. Ball is at the 42. The Loretto under a lot of pressure and they were able to get them. That's number six for King Philip is really King taking Philip John DeLuca they're third. Re they're really taking advantage of, of Russian uh, Rob DiLoretto. They got right at him, right at him. The line has a hole right now and they have got to fill the hole. They have to fill it. The ball is at the 50 now, 50 yards, 50 yard line. It's gonna close out the third quarter. One more quarter to go in this second half. King Philip, 14, the Reading Rockets, six. We'll see what happens, Nick. I think that uh, going here into the fourth quarter, um, I mean, you gotta really sort of, you gotta, you gotta dig down deep. This is where champions are made. Exactly, you gotta dig down deep and really. Who wants this more? Does exactly. King Philip want it more? Or do the Rockets want it more? Right, exactly. The game is in territory for either team. It's uh, it's, it's 14 to six. It's that's nothing really in football. Right. What I want to make sure that we do before this fourth quarter begins is we do want to again thank our crew from RCTV. We are here at Gillette. Big thank you to the camera, the director, everybody who does a great job here for putting everything together. Uh, we want to thank. Tom Zaya, Director of Athletics at Reading High School, and Adam Barker, Principal, who have allowed us to be here for this broadcast. Um, I do want to say, which is pretty cool, this is now the third time I have broadcasted here at Gillette. Um, it's a fantastic experience that you get. I did not broadcast a game last year due to a scheduled commitment, but it's nice to be back here in the booth to take part in what could be a historic night here for the Rockets. Yeah, and my first year being the color commentary here with you, Nick. How so did you enjoy it? Did you like it? I, you know what? I really enjoyed myself this season so far. I mean, uh, all throughout the year. I do want to give you credit. I do, yeah. I do think that for an average person that anybody that comes in and do color or anything like that, it, it can be a little nerve-wracking before you get your bearings and, and yeah. get everything comfortable in yeah. a setting. I, you know what? I, I enjoyed myself this season so far. Obviously this is, like I said before, icing on the cake for running, getting here to Gillette Stadium in the Super Bowl, is. being able to broadcast the game. Now Redding did lose last season. That was against uh, Neshoba here at Gillette. This is a chance for them to redeem themselves here at Gillette. They have won before here, and that was back in 2010. I believe that was against Walpole back then. Oh, how about this play? Destino yes! has it. Little trickery there for the Rockets, and he's going to find the end zone. How about that play? Little trickery there. That was a pass from Matt Panacopoulos. We saw that earlier this season. We saw that. So how about that play? Redding's bringing out the bag of tricks. What a play. They're pulling rabbits out of their helmets. What a play. <laughs> That was a good rabbit. Wow, that was one great play. It wasn't a silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. That was a good rabbit. <laughs> so the magician, Coach John Fiore. And Rob DiLoretto. And Rob DiLoretto. Got to give credit to them, the magicians. Hopefully we get a chance to ask them about that little trickery play right there. Great run by Eric D'Agostino. He has been outstanding, this, outstanding tonight. He's got some big plays. 
on the special team side of the ball and also getting a big touchdown right there. Redding going for two. So a great way to open the fourth quarter for the Rockets. Loretto goes back, passing it over. It's gonna be incomplete. That was over to Geiger. That was over to Gore, excuse me. Gore, number 15, was not able to get the ball. So Redding will still trail by two. King Phillip 14 and the Rockets 12. Redding will need another touchdown or a field goal to win this game. Geiger had a lot, I mean, excuse me, Gore, I'm just looking at the replay here, had a lot of room, had a lot of room. He did have a lot of room, but he, over he overthrew him, though. Yeah, overthrew him. He had plenty of room, but he just, he just overthrew him and he wasn't able to get there. So Yandel, number 81, will get himself ready to kick, get ready to kick. He'll be kicking off to number six for King Philip, John DeLuca the third, and number 25, Shane Fromer. Big play, that was a big, big touchdown for the Rockets. Gets them right back into this game, only down by two. This is a huge series for the defense, Rob. Huge series. Yandel with a big blast. At the, oh, it's fumbled. Out at the 15. Finally brought down by, actually, that was brought down by the kicker, Rob, number 81, Yandel. Getting up there in the play. Yep. So he will be down. Looks like it, the ball's at the 30-yard line, which is pretty good. Let's see what the Reading defense has to offer. Well, not, I don't think it's a matter of what they have to offer. It's what are they going to be offering. And the offering needs to be a very quick and a very good. Because they cannot allow King Philip to chop any of this time off the clock. They just can't. I can see the Reading sidelines is uh, they're amped up. They're moving around. They're into this. They have a fighting chance. That was a run there that was passed back from Leiden over to number 25. Again, number 25 is Shane Fromer. May have picked up a yard. Yeah, it looks like it's about a yard. It's gonna bring up a second and nine. The ball is at the 31. This is again, like we said at the start of the fourth quarter. This is the, cha this is the time where champions are made, make or break time. That was a championship style play that we just saw with Panacopoulos connecting with D'Agostino in the end zone. Leiden looking for the pass. Damari unable to get number 34 there, number 34 for King Phillip. That's Brett Mazur, and again, burnt coverage. Burnt coverage, Mazur goes in for the touchdown. That makes it 20 to 12, King Phillip. That was blown coverage once again. Yep, blown coverage. Once again. Every time they allow Leiden to drop back, the secondary is just not on the same page. They're really not, they're not on the same page, and it's uh, just not being that Jerry right there is just, is just <laughs> that is big versus small. It and really that is. is not to get not give credit to the kick is up and the kick is that is good. 21-12, King Phillip. John Damari is a solid, solid player. Don't get me wrong, solid kid and all. But that is big boy versus little right there. Big versus little. And right there we just saw Mazur just that was strength, that was ground and pound, just being able to take it to the house and getting it in there. It really was, and... Um, and I think King Phillip knows that their strength is to beat Redding secondary, because size-wise, they're just gonna beat Redding. I mean, here's a replay once again. I mean, just a, a big, big guy right there. Eight forty-two now to go here in this fourth. And it is cold, I'll tell you that, Rob. Winter is here, winter is here. 
win or lose, we just want to let you know that it's been a great season no matter what. Eight and three, eight and four, whatever it's going to be for the Rockets. They got back to the Super Bowl. They should not hang their heads. It really has been a great season so far. And um, at the 15, there goes Geiger at the 40. And he gets down at about the 45. Good return there from Geiger, number 21. It's a nice run. Yeah, but like I was saying, Nick, it has been a great year so far, whether whether win or lose here for the for the Reading Rockets. Um, you're absolutely right. They shouldn't hang their heads high. Reading needs to score quickly. I have to tell you that. They have to score quickly. And right now, it's not going to matter of scoring two. They're going to need to get the extra point. So they need more than a touchdown here. Hand it off to DiNapoli. DiNapoli trying to find some room. Unable to. It's going to bring up a second down and 10. The problem here is the clock is still going to tick. He needed to get out of bounds to have that clock stop, and he wasn't able to do it. Ball is at the 47-yard line. And the clock keeps ticking. It keeps on ticking. I mean, 10-minute time is just, and again, more time off because Redding adjusts here. Same, same goes to King Phillip. They have to adjust. We need to see a nice pass here from DiLoretto. That's fine. But again, that, not that's not what you want to see. you got to hit the end. you got to hit outside. The secondary for King Phillip is all over them. Yeah. But there's still a good play. And Rain just has to keep moving the chains. The clock keeps About a three-yard pickup. This will bring up third and seven. They actually give it a third and six. They give it an extra yard there on the play. Thank you, ref. <laughs> Ball at the 43. Uh, and again, looking. Oh, Jack. Geiger. Incomplete. He had it. Good coverage there from 21 from King Phillip, number 21, Dittrich. And actually, number 81. I don't want to give credit to him. Um, Dunn. That was nice double coverage. Dun, Dunn and. Dunn and Dunbar. No. <laughs> Dunn and. Who did I say? Dunn and Gittrich right there on great coverage in the secondary. We're going to have a timeout for the Rockets. Well, I think that this is your chance here with this timeout to figure out what you're going to do here. Rob, what in the world can Redding do here? They just need a big pass play to get down the field and get in touchdown territory to stay in this game. What if the secondary has them covered? What can you do? Do you go back to your bag of tricks? Yeah. I mean, if you, you can play another, you can call another trick play. Um, it should be interesting to see what the Reading offense is, is going to call here. I mean, if I, if I were the coach, I would look for the pass because you have so much, you have so little time where you have to get in there quickly and then you pretty much have to try an onside kick. That onside you kick, exactly. you have to try your best to get that recovery and try to, again, get in the end zone. De Loretto just in a lot of trouble. King Phillips secondary is all over him tonight. All over. Well, the, the secondary is all over the receivers for the Rockets, but I want to also say that the offensive, the um, the offense, the defensive line for King Phillip has given De Loretto no time. It's given given him a real hard time tonight. No time to th throw the ball. Not sure what happened to the Reading offensive line, but um. you know I got to tell you, it, it, it is a shame if Reading does end up losing this game. This would be two chances for some of these seniors that are on this field to get a championship. That that's that's kind of devastating. That can be devastating. That's for, devastating for a lot of the kids. But you were here twice and not able to get the job done. Yeah. But like you said before, Nick, they have to hang their heads high. And. 
at the end of the day and just, and just make sure that they... Well, this also gets to an interesting debate and an interesting question about this whole alignment here with the MIAA and how they do the Super Bowls. Yeah. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about how they align the certain teams? Because the playoffs, they start pretty much that last week in October. We've been at this since then. We've seen Chumsford in the house. We've seen um, some other teams as well to get to this stage. I mean, I really don't have a, a, an honest opinion on that. It's obviously about a good solid month of... Leiden again with the handoff. That goes to number six. That's DeLuca, the third. Gets plenty enough for another first down. It's been about a month and a half of tournament football. Is that kind of ridiculous? What do you think? You know, I really don't have an honest and opinion. I'm a big I, supporter of the MIAA. I know, so. I know you are. I, and I'm, I'm starting to become a big supporter of the MIAA. But um, a lot of people were obviously uh, probably happy with the old way of how tournament football was here for Massachusetts. But um, I think after a while, it, do, it does wear and tear. Well, another thing that you want to look at, too, is the Middlesex League. I mean, Reading pretty much... Has two different divisions now. No, there's two different divisions. We saw a really good competition, which was Lexington, who completely destroyed Reading right. at their house. We've seen Stoneham as well. They're not a part of the big Liberty division. There's a Liberty and a Patriot. Stoneham was able to beat the Reading. So where's the strength there? Is there a strength there, or is it a weakness for Reading to lead up to this Gillette game? I think the only bad thing is, is that you don't see some teams that you're playing in your, in your division for two years because of the switch. So you may, Reading may not see, see Melrose. This will bring up a second and nine. Another handoff, this one to DeLuca, the third. Again, finding plenty of room. Very short to very close to another first down. And you were just talking about Melrose? Yeah, so I just, like I was saying before, obviously with the two different divisions now for the Middlesex League and having, not seeing some teams for two years. So Reading may not see the Melrose for two years. They may not see Wakefield for two years. So it's kind of an advantage for some of the teams that might be able to get scouting reports on on their opponents. And it, there could be disadvantages with that as well. Um, do you have anything on that? I personally think that it can be a weakness to lead up to the big stage against one of these teams. I think what Reading needs to do a little bit more, and this goes for a lot of other teams, is maybe you want to have more of those non-league style scrimmages or games where you can match up against a really strong opponent before your real season begins in like the Middlesex League and whatnot. Exactly. I think that that's something that they need to do a little bit more because we saw uh, Lawrence Academy was able to beat Reading early in their scrimmage game for the non-league to start I totally, the season. I totally agree with that. I think that you really have to sort of... Because here's a team like King Phillip where, yeah, it might take 50 minutes to get to. You might want to be able to travel yourself for the, if you were Reading to face off one of these teams because you very well could play them again in the Super Bowl. Exactly. And sort I of think have you a, need that. And have an idea of exactly what kind of plays they call and have, have an idea of what their game is like. But um, sometimes you don't get that lucky. You don't see some of these teams for two years. That's which right. Is, that's which right. Can, which can be brutal. That was a big stop for the Reading defense. It's a fourth and four coming up. Uh, we have a whistle on the field. Looks like we have another timeout that's here. We have 4-14. 4-14 to go in this game. King Phillip 21, Reading 12. I don't think it's appropriate to use the word deflated here at Gillette Stadium. But... I know, Rob, you're still laughing. I had to use that word. How does Reading feel right now? If you want to use my word, you can. I don't think they feel deflated as of right now, but um, I think they're still trying to figure out ways to get get the football in the end zone. I just, it, it, they have to figure something out. It's been a challenge. It's it been had, a big challenge. It has been a challenge. They're showing here on the big screen the crowd for King Philip, and boy, oh boy, did they come out and support their team tonight. That's something that you really love to see. 
Reading, on the other hand, I I'm a little disappointed in what I see for the crowd over there. I'm a little disappointed. I don't know about you. There really isn't a big fan there section. There really for is not. And maybe it's because we're a little spoiled in Reading. We think we're the New England Patriots. And we have that, oh, we'll get there again. We'll be there next season. Leiden with the pass. And he connects again with Fernandez, number 34. And again. No, actually, no. I think that might have been out of. They call that what they no call catch. It. They call it no catch. Okay, that's big. That's very big. So 4.06 to go. First and 10 where Redding will be taking over. Redding has got to get that ball. Again, there's no replay in high school football. Yeah, his foot was out of bounds. Uh, one foot was in. One foot was in. So if it was one foot was in, that means that's that's good in high school. One foot in. But that was no catch, though. They they, they called they called it no catch. And again, that's another call that went Redding's way. <laughs> Interesting. That's two calls tonight. The fumble should have been one, and that play right there looked like a catch to me. Could be wrong, but. So the Reading offense gets another chance here out in the fields. 4.06 to go. D'Agostino. Oh, incomplete. Almost picked off. I didn't particularly care for that call right there. Uh, that was number 21. Almost had the ball there for King Phillip. That was uh, Dittrich. Dittrich almost with the interception there. That ball was not thrown very very good. I like the call, it's just the ball didn't have any flight to it. He didn't really have a grip on the ball. That was like a dead duck. Yeah, he didn't, really, he didn't really have that much grip to the ball. No. Redding's definitely trying the bag of tricks here to see what they can do. Four minutes and counting. Starting now. De Loretto just, up. Oh, he scrambles. Trying to throw it, and he gets it off to Geiger. It will not be a grounding, so this will just bring up another third down. Redding is just looks, they look lost. They look lost, Rob. They're looking for plays. They're just looking for plays to get, to get going. Some type of connection to be able to get the offense going, but let's see how this goes. This will bring up a third and 10. Ball is at the 37. Snap. Again, more pressure. De Loretto gets clocked, but he does get connected to DiNapoli. He breaks free. He's at the 20, 10, 5, and touchdown. De Loretto, uh, just so you know, De Loretto is hobbling down the field. He got really hit. Big touchdown there for DiNapoli. Makes the score 21 18, King Phillip. Redding will be going for two here. So how about this? 3.38 to go in this game and a nice late touchdown. De Loretto was able to connect with DiNapoli who got open, found the end zone, and gets in. Redding's gonna actually go for the extra point. Makes sense. I mean, it makes sense, Rob, because what's the you need the you need the points. The kick is up. And the no kick good. is no good. 21-18. The two points wouldn't have mattered there because you're still trailing by one if you go for two. That's why. That's why Redding's going for the kick. I agree with that call. Because still, if Redding could win by could tie it with a field goal. Okay, if you think about it. Or you just you're still trailing by one. You know what I mean? That's a three point difference for a game now. They're showing the replay right there. It looks like some of the defenders there from King Phillip got a little uh, slipped up there. They sl looks like they slipped. That was a huge so, touchdown for Redding. That was huge. Of course it was. But what's got to be huge here, that touchdown could be pointless unless Redding comes out and does a quick three and out and gets that ball. That's the only way that touchdown is big. Right now, the biggest play on this field is special teams getting the receivers down there short yards. They cannot return this ball. 
they cannot. So Yandel right here, number 81, knows that he's got to he's got to kick that ball with all his might right now. Reading defense. That's job number one. The Redding. next thing is special teams. Going to try an onside kick. Right at the 50. Right at the 50. Redding's defense ha has to come out and stop them. Agree with that call, the onside kick there. I mean, it really, they're at the 50. But right at midfield. Redding's defense ha has to come up big. They have to come up big. They need to come up big. They need to be prepared. The secondary needs to make sure that they shut down their ta the targets. They cannot allow Leiden to throw that ball down the field and score. They cannot. So here we go. First and 10. Ball at the 49. Leiden. Hands that ball off to DeLuca the third. And I'm gonna say he picks up about seven on the play, Rob. I think that was a seven yard gain. So that'll bring up a second and three coming up. Reading's defense has to stay tough here. They have to stay tough and come up with big stops. Lines need to, line needs to be big here. Line needs to come up big. 3.09, giddy up 3.09, what's that song? 4.09, Never mind. Three minutes and counting. Clock is still going. Second and five. Another handoff to DeLuca. Redding's def uh, they thought Redding's defense was able to stop them from getting any uh, extra yardage on the play, but it looks like it's going to be a first down. They're going to move the chains, and then the clock will restart. The clock will continue right now. 2.50 and counting. 21-18, King Phillip. The ball is at the 40-yard line. So first and 10, they are going to take all the time they want. And of course they are. Big play by nice. Diavolio. That's going to be a loss of yards on the play. Great play by the running 222 defense. and counting. But again, King Phillip, they're going to take their time. Second and 11. Huge stop by Anthony DiVolio. Leiden coming back in. This will bring up the two minutes and counting. Reading's not going to have much time if they get the ball back. Another run. That run was for number 25. Number 25 is Fromer. Looks like I have a whistle. Reading takes Redding. a timeout. Did they just say that's the last one they have? That is their last timeout. They say last timeout. Okay, so that's the last timeout they have. Well, Rob, here's your season. Third and seven. Defense has to come up huge here. If you do not allow them to get a first down, then we're talking a fourth and whatever it's going to be. They're not going to punt the ball, so they still have a fourth down play coming up too. I agree with stopping the clock here, but hopefully Redding does not, hopefully Redding has enough time to deliver something, because it's going to be about a minute or less where they're going to have a chance to get down there and do something. But it can only happen here if the defense is flawless. Exactly. They, they have to... This is, this is your season. Here's your season. Two series here. You gotta pass both tests to have a chance to get that ball back on offense and see if you can get the win. Exactly. The Reading fan section is now oh, become, they're here? become very lively. I'm not trying to knock our hometown, but I'm very, very disappointed, town of Reading. You did not really come out tonight. There's not that many people here. Now King Philip is all confused. They take a timeout because Reading looked like they knew what they were going to do. So that's their last timeout. Gives Reading defense another shot of. 
So now they're gonna be prepared. I see Coach Blanchard, Coach Fiore down there trying to make sure that they set the tone. They know what their players are gonna do. Absolutely. Any adjustment that needs to be made is where you do it right now. King Philip is going over what they plan on doing. They know that they're most likely gonna try and run the ball. They have to make sure they do not fumble the ball. That's important too. There's a lot of those, a lot of those things that you have to consider here when all, both teams are here in the huddle. Exactly, you just, you really have to, the running defense has to stay strong being able to execute. It's gonna be a huge play here. I see number 25, that's Fromer in the back for King Phillip. They pitch it back to him. Brought down. Huge play. Okay, so that's test number one passed. Clock will continue to tick. It's at 139 and counting. Now we're at about 135. Fourth and five. Fourth and five. What does King Phillip do on this play? They're looking to move the change. Oh, they have to, to they have to get the first down. If they do not get the first down, Redding gets the ball here at minimum it's going to be the 30 yard line. I think they're going to be looking to, for a deep pass. They've been successful with the deep pass throughout this entire game. So you're going to look for the pass, huh? I think it's the run. I think you're going to see the run. Timeout. Well, T timeout King They have up. another timeout. They're all flustered. They don't know what they're going to do. I think they just used their final timeout They as well. did too. So we have no timeouts for either teams left. Redding has to make sure when they get the ball, if they get it on offense, they got to get it to the outside to get out of bounds. They struggled with that tonight. Well, no matter what, I mean, this has been a very exciting season. We're at one, one minute and eight seconds, and we're still talking about a potential Redding win here. Yes, they're down three, but we could, they could very well have a chance of getting this victory. We don't know the odds on what's going to happen in this one right now. It's exciting. Should be interesting to see what happens, but um, this upcoming play is really, see, really this is, big. This is big for King Philip calling the timeout because this gives Redding a chance to regroup. Regrouping. They can readjust on what they exactly. want to do. Exactly. The coaches can step right in and say, this is what we need to do. This exactly. is who we need to shut down. Exactly. This is how we execute. So here it is. Fourth and five, ball at the 35 yard line. The snap, Leiden with the ball, gonna look for the pass. There's your game. Converted there to number 17, probably one of the biggest plays of the game right there, Tyler Janeski, who's also had some crucial plays on downs to get the ball and get it for first down. Right there is the biggest one of the day for them. It's gonna end up being the victory here. Redding had the chance, they had the chance. But they got beat in areas where it was kind of no surprise. That receiver was wide open. Done a cut route. Cut yep. route. Out victory, to the victory formation will be here for King Philip. About one minute here to go. All they have to do is line up. And unfortunately, Reading is now 0-2 in the past two years with getting a Super Bowl. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? The Reading defense wasn't. Uh, they didn't come out to play in the second half. No. Did not come out to play in the second half whatsoever. Too many well, missed opportunities. Well, let, let me back you up there for a second, too, because at the tail end of the first half, remember, King Phillip did go into the end zone and score. They did. Right. So that's I something that... Them, that I, I think they gave them a huge boost going into the locker room. They were feeling good about themselves. Redding was trying to figure out what they were going to do. Yep. Redding did score early first. One of the stars of the game, hands down for the Rockets, would be Nick DiNapoli. Okay? Had a great game for the Rockets. Eric D'Agostino had a great touchdown reception. Yep. Matt Panacopoulos got the touchdown pass. He threw the ball and connected with D'Agostino. So it was great to be able to see that. Redding definitely showed up to play. Let's not take that away from them. They showed up yes, to play. They came to play. But what we saw from King Phillip was they were able to use their strengths, which were the run game for them and Leiden being able to connect with his receivers. He was the more clutch quarterback of the day.
He was clutch. He was. He, he was, delivered when he had to. Exactly. He came to play, and he really... Um, King Phillip won the game. Yes, they did. They certainly did. So final score here at Gillette Stadium. King Phillip 21, the Reading Rockets 18. Unfortunately, the Reading Rockets do not become the Division 1A Super Bowl champions. That's going to go to King Phillip. We want to congratulate them. Okay, they were a very classy team from what we saw. Very minimal amount of flags thrown. Very minimal. That's always good. It was all on the Reading side. Yes. There was no offsides. There was no unsportsmanlike. That team was a very respectful opponent. You want to see that. Any final words before we close it out here this season? I think it was just a great overall season. They were able to still persevere yep. for Reading and, and getting back here to the Super Bowl, but this loss tonight will definitely sting for a while. It'll sting. That is very correct. But another thing, too, the, the underdog was Reading coming into this. They, Reading they was were. not expected to win this. They were, they were not. To make a competition out of this and be down three points, that says a lot. That says that they came to play. It was a matter of just a couple things that didn't go their way. Right. Once again, final score. King Phillip Regional High School, your Super Bowl champions for Division 1A. They're 21. The Reading Rockets are 18. For the final time this fall for the 2016 season, this is Nick Face. And Rob McCarthy. We will see you again next fall. We hope you enjoy the winter. You will be able to see, hear us and see us this winter for coverage of the RMHS girls, boys, basketball team, hockey team, and probably some more surprises along the way. We will see you soon.